frequency um, energies, this is above one hertz. So if you remember the strategy we were working with last year, it's that signal that has big spikes. That's what we call spheric. So that is atmospheric activity mainly from lightning. So what happens, the lightning induces electromagnetic fields and then travel between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere, that sort of a wave guy, and it travels from the storms around the Earth. And that's why when we get the signal, we assume it's a plane wave, just because how far the sources are. So it's not that, you know, it's the it's plane wave. So that's sort of one of the assumptions from making EMT. So this is the high frequency data. This is one mainly used for AMT exploration. So this is, you know, from 20 meters to two kilometers. This is the energy that we use to map that sort of range in the Earth's surface. Uh, this is an actual, um, this is what we see on the stratagem, but this was done from um, atmospheric stats. But remember those the spikes you see in the stratagem, this is what's being shown. And this is the frequency of the lightning storms. Okay, and then the second source is our low frequency source. This is below one hertz. And um, this is called uh, micropulsations. So this is, this is a bit more complex. What happens here is that we have solar winds, which is a consistent plasma coming from the sun, and the plasma itself has a minor magnetic field. Um, and what happens on the, the sun-facing side of the Earth, the, the solar wind actually compresses the magnetic field. And then on the evening side or the night side, it has a tail because it doesn't have a compression. Now the thing with the solar winds is that they change in velocity, density, and magnitude all the time, which results in the magnetic, magnetic field fluctuating. So it's, it's moving, especially on the day side of, of the planet. So what this does, is obviously a moving magnetic field will induce some sort of current. And actually the, in the ionosphere, the, the, the molecules in the air gets ionized by both the X-rays and gamma rays. And because of temperature fluctuation, we start getting um, con convection in the ionosphere which results in a um, large-scale current system in the ionosphere. And that produces the first sort of um, source of magnetic field that induces low-frequency uh, currents within the ground. And that's so that because they are um, such low frequency, they're a lot deeper. So this is why we can split the two source fields into spherics and micropulsations. Okay. 